This video is going to be covering the vertex options under the main tab. If you have any questions about what you see in this video or in the shader at all, please direct them to the Discord server. There's a link in the description below. All right, let's start. So vertex options are for moving the model or sort of messing with the model scale, whatever. I'll show you all of this. All right, so the first thing is the local translation. And what this does is move the object based on the object's sort of position and rotation. So if I move something up and then I rotate it, it's going to rotate with the option because this upward position is based on this object's transform. And the transform is sort of the, the position and rotation scale of the object. All right, let's go to the next one. This is a local rotation. So, oops, let me select the right thing here okay so this is a local rotation it's in degrees and again it is based on the model so if you rotate the model it's going to rotate with it <clears throat> and if i did both a local translation and oops i went way too far i do a local translation and rotation it's going to sort of orbit it as if it was parented to it This is a local scaling, so it's going to scale the object, and then if you scale it, it'll scale with it, <clears throat> all that. This is useful. I don't know, you could make something like pulsate bigger, do whatever. One thing you do have to worry about is the bounding box. So I think if you, yeah, you can see it disappears before it's off camera. That's because when you scale something or move it, the same thing will happen to this object. If you look away from the object, it'll disappear. So you have to be aware of that. You can't just like send things across the map. For something like that, you would probably want to use an animation. So the bounding box of the object is going to be like this. Like you're just going to have a square here. And then when you leave that, it's not going to render it anymore for performance. So just be aware of that. You can increase, you can manually increase your bounding box and all that, but uh, just Google that. I'm not going to cover all that stuff in this video just for time's sake. And this one is a world transformation. So rather than being based on the object's position, you're offsetting it in the world space. So if I move this over here, it's not going to orbit the object. It'll still rotate with the object because you're rotating it and it's still part of it, but it's not going to rotate around it because it's being translated like in world position up and then left and it'll stay in that position. Now if you move this around, it'll move with it because it's still like translating based from its origin, but it's not going to match it when you rotate. And this is useful, <clears throat> say you had like a second set of arms on your avatar, you could offset them like a little bit lower and they would totally, they would still use all of your animations. So you could like move your arms around and the bottom ones would move too but you wouldn't have to like rig them. Well, you still rig them, but you wouldn't have to like rig them differently. They would just be in the, on top of the original arms and then just translated down. <clears throat> this one is vertex height. So what's happening here is it's just sort of expanding like a balloon or contracting and you can invert it and do all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, this is useful in certain situations, you're almost never going to use any of these options, to be honest. There's just very specific situations, and they're pretty cheap to run. So, I don't know, maybe you're into inflation stuff. This is great for that. <laughs> this one is the same thing, actually. It's just using a height map. So, we have this height map attached to it, and we can lower that. So, if I set this to zero, it's not going to move at all. And then you increase the height. And what you're seeing here is, let me just open this. What you're seeing here is these black and white. The black areas are actually going down and the white areas are going up. By default, the black areas will move zero and the white areas will move as far as your vertex height is. It's like a multiplier. So let's go back to that material. The mask bias. What you're seeing here, let me stop the uh, panning for a second. The mask bias is sort of where 
anything below the mask bias is going to go inward and anything above it is going to go outward. So if I set the mask the if I set the mask bias to 0, everything is going everything is going to be above that except for black. So it'll all go up. But if I set it to 0.5, that means anything below like that 0.5 gray value is going to go down and anything above it is going to go out. So I'm going to make this wiggle again. And all of this works with the shadows and all that. That was a bug up until recently. Now this one, this Minecraft looking one, is rounding. So if I tick the rounding, you're basically subdividing um, the positions. So rather than having like really high, um, what's the term, precision, rather than having really high precision, you're going to actually lower that. So instead of being like, 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. It's just going to be like 0, 1, 2, 3. And you're just dividing the precision, basically. So you're making things less precise. If you've ever gone, like, really far out in a world, you'll see, like, this starts to happen. This is useful for, like, say you have a model that's, like, really low poly and you're trying to get, like, that PlayStation 1 vibe. You can use this. So not like that, but something like this, where it kind of jiggles because it doesn't have the precision that like a modern game would. Or you can just go full blocky. That covers everything in the vertex options. If you have any questions about this, please send them to the Discord server. There's a link in the description below. That's all. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something.